What is going on, guys? It's your boy, Apathy. Today, we're going to be doing five tips on how to have the perfect aim. Now, I do a similar video every single year. Things change a little bit, so I'm going to be breaking down the settings, the best tips for you guys to be shooting laser beams, like one of the best. Oh, and don't forget to catch me at twitch.tv slash apathy. And this video helps you out. Like and subscribe to the channel. Now let's go. So one of the most important tips. And before we go any further, we're going to do tip number one is the settings. This is a game changer because, hey, if you play on 1010 and you ask me apathy, I can't shoot straight. Well, your sense is probably too high. So we're going to work with you guys. Okay, we're going to work with the settings first thing. It's extremely important. So pay attention. Now, I always recommend five to eight, usually five to seven. Eight, it can be a little bit tricky. The thing is, you can mess with the ADS sensitivity. So, for example, uh, I like to ha I like to put it 0.75 if I want to be a 6 ADS while I'm aiming in. 6 ADS while aiming in is kind of where you want to be at no matter what sensitivity you play on. So, if I play 661, that's me in a 6 ADS. If I, if I play 88.75, that's 6 ADS aiming in. It's a good medium where it's not too slow, but it's not too fast. So, you can still beam and you can still kind of uh, track people if they're like hitting some crazy movements, slide canceling around the corner very fast. You can still kind of follow them. So, 661 is my my like favorite sense. Almost every pro player runs this sense because of how good it is. So, you can only understand why. And there's reasons for that, which I'll go more in detail later in the video. But 661 is good. You can kind of mess around with 7, um, 8. But trust me, you can start off with 661, kind of like a base. If your sense is too high, maybe too low, it will take a little muscle memory and practice. And with these tips, I'm sure you'll get a hang of it. Next big thing is aim response curve type. We got dynamic. Now, dynamic is something pros and a lot of people have been using the past couple years. Dynamic is a little bit weird. It can be a little fast. It can be a little bit hard to get used to at first, if, especially if you're a standard player. Do not run linear. Run standard or dynamic, but I highly recommend dynamic. It will take a little bit of getting used to. Uh, a lot of play time and, you know, just with some changes, you're going to get used to it. And I think it's more beneficial. I really do. Like I said, most pro players use it because it's that good. So switch to dynamic if you can. And one of the biggest thing is the right stick dead zone. So this is the dead zone, obviously, for your aiming stick. Um, usually, some people have stick drift and they kind of have to put this high. If your stick drift, if you have to put this over a 10 and you still have stick drift, Get a new controller, please, because it's gonna just hinder you. It's gonna hinder you a lot. You kind of want to, you kind of want to stay around four, five, six, seven. You know, if you gotta go eight or nine, like it is what it is. But uh, usually, you want to be around the default for this one, like five, six, uh, four. If you want to get a little bit looser on the stick, um, this is gonna help you have more precise shots. Like if you can test it yourself, if you put your dead zone pretty high and try to like hit some long range shots, you're gonna see like it, it's weird. You can't make those little um small adjustments and it's gonna cost you and just in case people ask me about this in the video or in the comments target aim assist mode i do have it on default i have heard people do like black ops and it's actually pretty good um but we're gonna have this on default for this one and now guys for tip number two and this is a very important tip therefore we're gonna start with this one next it is and the <laughs> one of the most important things it's centering now centering is something i talk about in a lot of aiming tip videos and in my you know my streams anything i always talk about centering and how important it is because basically when you're centered on someone you're already aiming at them you're already all you have to do essentially when you're centering on somebody you just got to snap now centering does require some skill and uh that is why i say play on a slower sense because when you play on a slower sense um you're not whipping your your sticks too much you know you can precisely always center kind of your slower sense you can control the centering easier and a lot more consistent so you can see I'm centering, kind of centering on my enemy, centering. And anytime I'm basically ready to, to kill them, you know, I'm basically ready to go. Now, I know some people struggle with centering. You know, maybe the centering is a little off. They're aiming a little bit to the floor, maybe a little too high. Um, you always want to try to center in the middle of your screen and kind of just control that centering. You also want to center kind of where you're going or where you're anticipating your enemies. So you see my centering is in the middle of my screen. All I have to do is kind of like snap on them. And you kind of want to still, if I think someone's about to be here, I'm going to center here, center here, center here. You can still slide cancel center as well. And then all you have to do is snap on them. Center there. And you can see my centering is on, so on point to the point where I really don't have to make much adjustments. I just aim in and shoot. Obviously, sometimes you will have to make some adjustments. And it also depends on the terrain. For example, this is another uh, important tip when it comes to centering. So... Oh, what, what are you doing here, buddy? So let's say I'm about to go down a ramp or a staircase. Like, I'm not going to keep centering like high, right? I'm going to adjust a little bit. And now I'm going to center and slightly center a little lower. I mean, that goes for anything, right? You're going to go down the stairs or up the stairs. Um, I know this this uh, this barn has like a staircase. So I can show you real quick. 
Um, but let's say I'm gonna go here. I'm not gonna kind of be like this, right? If someone's here, by the time I aim up, he's gonna kill me if I'm centering that way. So you wanna basically anticipate someone being there. You wanna center high. You wanna center like this. And then as you're going and then as you're going up, you're gonna start to slow her down and you're gonna center down. And you're centering just and then like like I come out here, there's not gonna be an enemy out in the sky just flying like Superman, right? So now when I come here, now I'm gonna center down. I'm gonna center. And that's why centering is so important. And obviously, you guys know Call of Duty. Um, you die very fast. Time to kill can be insanely quick. Um, sometimes the one millisecond is all it takes. And with centering, you're basically ready for that gunfight, and you you have that one millisecond advantage um almost every single time. So that is why you see some of the pro players hit some crazy shots. That's why you see like they're on point. You're like, holy shit, like he just snapped on him, or oh my god, like he won that crazy gunfight. And usually that has to do with centering. Like when you see some of those crazy gunfights that get won, their centering is just on point and they're ready, super ready for that gunfight. And they're not getting caught off guard and they're maybe catching the enemy off guard. So that is a huge thing. I know that was a mouthful, but hopefully I explained it pretty well. And that's something you just have to practice. Uh, go around the map and kind of just center around. Shoot bots if you want. Kind of center. Just practice your centering. Uh, this is definitely... Um, it can be a little hard to really get good at it. But once you have it, it's kind of muscle memory. And you're going to absolutely love it. But for tip number three, we're going to be talking about recoil control. Now, I know Call of Duty is a little bit weird when it comes to recoil control. There are, I would say, about two factors with that. So, real quickly... In any game or in any shooting game, there's obviously horizontal and vertical recoil control. So you can actually check the stats in the, the classes when you press R2 on the guns. But I, I currently can't do that in game. And you want to basically try to always lower the horizontal recoil and just make guns have vertical recoil. Because the vertical recoil control is the easiest one to control. Because usually all you have to do is pull down. If, if, it's shoot, if you have to pull down and side to side, like it's going to get very weird. And it's very difficult to do that, especially on controller. So basically what you want to do is you want to kind of always, um, first of all, try to lower the, the horizontal and make sure your gun has more um, vertical, if anything, than horizontal. And then the next thing is you want to kind of find out the recoil of a gun. Now, a lot of the guns are going to be more vertical. So a lot of guns are kind of kind of shoot up. So basically what you want to do is you kind of just want to hold, hold down. And kind of keep it very steady in that one place. You want to kind of hold down. You can see, like, I'm kind of shooting pretty straight, like, at that dot. Like, you can't really see the dot, but I'm shooting very straight at the same spot. And that's all I'm doing, just vertical recoil. So, I'm not, like, pushing down. I'm just slightly adjusting to it and just, like, pushing it down as I'm shooting at people. And this takes a little bit of practice, but once you get used to it, like, you can see I'm not missing. I'm beaming pretty well. And um, it's just practice and like understanding how how much you have to pull down. Every gun can be a little different, and that's something I recommend. Um, a huge tip, real quick. So go to settings, go to graphics, go to quality, and if you really want to see the recoil pattern and kind of where the gun, how the gun is shooting on top of you, make sure bullet impact and sprays are on. I recommend this off, but this is really good to have on, um, just for that reason. And then you can go to a wall, you can kind of shoot it. And you can see the gun kind of goes up and it kind of goes up. It goes at the top right. It was going like kind of to the right. So that basically gives me a uh, indicator that, okay, so I got to aim low, but I can also aim a little bit to the left because it, that is dual ball controller, like slight adjustments like that. So when I'm shooting at someone, instead of only aiming down, I'm going to aim slightly to the left, but very, very slightly. You know, it's going to be hard to maybe like kill a guy across the map but i can shoot this thing pretty damn straight even though it has a recoil to it and that's just recoil control recoil pattern and understanding call of duty and understanding you know how to how the gun shoots and practicing it that's why pro players have really good aim because pros have gotten really good at controlling the recoil of pretty much any gun especially vertical recoil if you've been playing call of duty for a while or been competing for a while you understand how to control it now for tip number four and this is a, also a very low-key but good tip to understand and, and actually apply to your own game we're gonna be talking about putting strafing into your shot so a lot of times you know sometimes people especially more casual players tend to think they only have to look at people and shoot where that is sort of true but you can also add strafing to your shot and to your technique and basically what strafing can do, it can help you lead your your shot or your iron sight into them. So you're not only using your right stick, you're also using your left stick in a lot of engagements and gunfights. And that's why a lot of, you see a lot of pros or good players that can shoot very straight. 
uh, they strafe a lot in gunfights. You know, they strafe back and forth. Maybe they strafe one way. Usually, you, you can watch, and I'm telling you, you see in a lot of engagements, they're always using their left stick. Maybe sometimes a lot, maybe sometimes a little. Um, some gunfights you need it a lot, some gunfights you don't. But, like, anytime I'm shooting someone, I'm literally using my left stick as well. And sometimes I'll make a slight adjustment, and sometimes I'll just hit a hard strafe. Especially depending how far the gunfight is. Usually, longer range gunfights, it's easier for me to lead my shot into the person. Uh, versus me trying to beam them from like super far if i can use both sticks left and right stick um a lot of the times it's gonna allow me to really hit those long range shots more accurately <clears throat> so this is another thing that might be a little weird at first but all you have to do is just when you're shooting at people and using your right stick just use your left stick too like kind of move around with it strafe a little bit and it's gonna it's not that hard to get used to it will be hard to really apply it all the time and like maybe help you hit your shots but you know just a lot of these tips and a lot of things is especially if you don't do them much it's more about just getting your feet in the water and kind of understanding the concept applying it working on it and with time you're gonna understand it more you're gonna start getting really good at it and you're gonna keep doing it and applying it but every single gunfight i like to strafe and use my strafing um basically to shoot people like not only will it help you hit better shots, but it can potentially make them miss shots because of the strafe, which every gun has different strafe speed. Obviously, that's another factor, but strafing is very good to have and do. And tip number five, one of my favorite tips, because there is no shortcut into having a really good aim. And obviously, all the tips I told you will help you a ton. And it's, I'm pointing you at the very best direction possible. But one of the biggest tips is just grind time and play time. So we always talk about grind hard, but also grind smart. Well, I'm giving you guys a lot of the smart parts. And you're, you know, watching this video, you're doing the smart part. You know, you just got to apply what I'm telling you, fix your things a bit. And now it's grinding hard. And like one of the best times where my shot is honestly the best. And when I got really good at Call of Duty was the insane, insane amount of time I was putting into Call of Duty. And really just mastering the recoil, mastering the playing time. And, you know, just the game itself and just getting really good at shooting straight and just shooting a lot better. And I was able to get there and accomplish that with playtime. So make sure you're playing a lot. It's There's no shortcut to it. It's going to take time. If you listen to all the stuff I told you, you're going to and understand them. You, you can improve a lot faster than some people. But it's going to take time. You got to play. But there's more to it. So let's say you're struggling with aim. There's always something you can do. Um, you can always, first of all, you can start up a free-for-all. Uh, play against bots you can put them on recruit and basically all you really want to do is run around and just practice your shot you know even if you're struggling a little bit if you do this every day or like every other day and just apply it to your schedule or your you know your routine you're gonna get a lot better with just shooting straighter and just kind of like aiming at people so this is a good way to do it you can play pubs you can play anything that honestly requires it has play time but I'll give you guys a really good uh, lobby to do to kind of help you shoot at someone for a longer amount of time. But for the main reason why it's also really good, the playtime in itself, is like when it comes to shooting people, antici anticipation and centering is like very important. So if I have an idea where people are going to be in certain times of the map or like if I know there's a head glitch right here, let's say I know this exact head glitch. If I fight this the first time, you know... I might lose it. I'd be like, damn, that's a good head glitch, right? I'd be like, okay, I killed that guy. But I'd be like, damn, that's a good head glitch, right? I do it again. I slide cancel out. Damn, he killed me, but I almost killed him. I do it the third time, perfectly centered. Bang! Pop him off the heady. And then he's like, damn, that guy's nasty. And it, it just, all it was was just like muscle memory, play time, trial and error. And yeah, my shot got really good. But in order to encounter some of those gunfights and like windows engagements, it's just play time. It's just grind time, baby. V2 rocket, shall I call it? i think so let's do this so very quickly before we end this video you can start this lobby and just play for 10 15 minutes it doesn't have to be anything crazy but just getting those reps and just shooting at people a lot and frequently is going to help you especially if you struggle with your aim go to game setup go to game rules go to player you can up the health to 150 so that way they eat a little bit more it takes an extra bullet or two to kill them and that means you have to stay on target longer which is nice and then obviously you want to put um press l3 or however if you're on pc or controller put autofill bots on make sure they're on recruit so they're not really shooting back especially you know if you're missing a little bit you don't want them to kill you you just want to have targets to aim at and kill them as and as many as you can and just shoot as many as you can 
And this is a good way to really just get that muscle memory down. But either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, and if this video helped you or it helps you in the future, make sure to like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm also making an Apathy Shorts channel. That way I can upload, you know, tips, crazy stuff that I do in stream or crazy clips on the Shorts channel. So I'll leave the description down below if you want to subscribe to it. Hey, I appreciate you guys. Have a great day. Have a great night. Have a great morning.